Hi everybody, today we're going to show you how to set up a project for recording in Kohler Classical. The first and simplest way is to uh, load in one of the templates that are provided. So you go to File, Open Project Template, and let's get this five-channel template here. Now we're going to want to set up the microphone inputs. So first I'm going to open up the destination group with the Control Option Command T. That command is on the navigation menu at the bottom, Show Hide Tracks Media, okay, for toggling those tracks. Now they're kind of small, so I'm going to make them larger so we can get at all the controls. So to do that, I go to Options, General, and change the small track height from 25 to, let's say, 125. Now we can see all the controls on those tracks. Um, now we select one track, because currently they're all selected. And so that's going to be my front left microphone. So I go to mono, front left. This one, I don't have a center, so I'll just leave that one also at mono, front left. Uh, this one is main right, so I'll make that my mono, front right. And this one I'll do, I have some other mics here, input one, and I'll make this input two. So that those mics would be whatever mics you have on your system. So those mics are all set up now, but I need to copy those to the source groups. So I use the command under Options, Initial Setup, cre Create Source Groups. That's going to delete and recreate all the source groups, but I have no audio in there now, so that's fine. So I do that, click OK. There are my new source groups. They all have the mics set up. We're ready to record now. So to arm the groups for recording, I click this button at the top to arm. I can also do it in the play record menu under arm. And I can also do it with the keystroke control option R. Okay? Simplest way is just click this button. Okay? That's now armed and the take number window shows up. I'm going to put this down at the right saying showing that we have no takes in the current directory. Now, I didn't set I didn't save this project yet, so I'm going to back up and show you because it's better to save the project first. If you, say, if you don't save the project, it records into some default directory, probably the Reaper Media directory, as I recall. Um, so I'm going to disarm this, which will close the take window. And our unsaved project, I'm going to save by clicking S. And I'm going to save it in this directory I have here, test project, and I'm going to call it test and overwrite the test that I have there. Place. Okay, now it's saved. And because it's saved, it will now record into the audio files directory below wherever I saved my project. You can set that with option return, which accesses the project settings window. Right here is where you set your path to save media files, which can be relative. If I just type audio files, that means it's in the directory below the project. Or you can browse and choose any directory you want to put it in. So right now when I start recording, it's going to record into that directory. So I arm for record, pops up my, my take number window. I can put that on another monitor if I want. Now I'm ready to record. I can either hit the record button and record a take, and hit the record button to stop, it's numbered take one. Um, and if I open it up, you can see it recorded on all five tracks. Okay, it's just recording my voice right now. You can start and stop either with the record button or with play record, record, or with command R. You can stop the recording either by hitting the record button, the stop button, the space bar, or play record, record or command R. So like five ways of stopping it. I'll just use command R for now. So here I'm recording a second take, stop. Here's a third take, stop. Now let's say you want to do a take. Let's say this first take was a section of a piece of music and you want to do a second take of that same section. Just click down in the next track. It automatically disarms this entire track group and arms this entire track group. Your cursor is ready to go. I can open that up again so you can see everything's armed and ready to go. I hit Command R and I'm now rec recording tr um, take four into this second group. And let's say I want to record another take down here. Click, I'm recording there. 
space bar stop, etc. And all the time the, the take number window is being updated. If you don't want that take number window, you can toggle it on and off using option tab, show or don't show. You can position it on any monitor you want. It auto increments. Now let's say you just recorded a take take five, which we just recorded, for example, and it was junk and you for sure don't need it. One thing you can do is delete it. Another thing you can do is record over it. So if you go to the play record mem uh, menu and go to last take number, it'll show you that it's five. If you just set that to four, then it's going to record five again. So watch what happens. I say, okay, it warns me I'm going to overwrite take five when I start recording. Now I start to record, and it warns me again if I use the command R key, you're about to overwrite take five. I say OK. Recording, 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 and I stop the recording. And notice that's the new take five, and it also updated the waveform here because that's an item that has part of take five in it. These now both have the same files in it. Another way to delete files, if you have a whole bunch of junk files, and you got to be very careful with this command, is select the items um, whose files you want to delete. Let's say I want to delete all those the files associated with those items. I can go to I can go to um, the file delete items and files command. Now that's deleting not just the items in your in your project here, but the actual files on the disk. So it warns you three times. So I say, yes, I want to continue. It says, okay, it's going to delete these 15 files. It was three takes of files each. I say, yes, again. And it, and it gives me a final, final. Are you really sure? I say, yes, again. And they're gone. So I just deleted all the files um, for those things. So now all I have left is takes one, two, and three. Um, so I could set my take counter back to three and start recording from there if I want to. So I go in here and say last recorded take is three. That will update my take number window. And now I can record take four again. So there's many ways to deal with this. And you can easily record into any place. And I can do it with the record button and hit the record button again to stop it. Um, or I can hit the record button and hit the stop button to stop it. Or I can hit the record button and hit the space bar to stop it. I can hit the record button and do command R to stop it. Doesn't really matter which way you stop it. There's five different ways. And it, it always increments the take number, displays it if you want to. And then when you're done recording, you just click this button to disarm. And that's it. Now. Let's do the case of setting up a project from scratch, not using a template. So I'm going to delete all this media for starters so I have a nice empty directory again. So let me just quickly delete all that. So I don't need any of that. I just deleted 35 files. OK. And now I'm going to close out this project. And we'll start from scratch. So we have an empty project. Let's say we just want to do a three track recording. So first thing we do is we create three tracks. Command T creates a track. One, two, three. Give them names. Doesn't matter what the names are. Let's call this A, tab, B, tab, C, return. So I've got three tracks named A, B, and C. I'm actually ready to record right now. But if you want to have the capability of bouncing between source groups, um, we create the source groups. So again, to do that, we go to Options. Uh, Initial setup, create source groups. OK. And there we are. Again, we're ready to record. Each source group has tracks A, B, and C now. So again, it doesn't matter where we record. We save the project so that we know where we're recording this. Save the project with an S. Again, let's call it test. I've already cleared out that audio files directory, so we should be fine. Replace. And we're ready to go. We got test saved. We click arm. And we start recording. Um, whoops, wrong. We got to, I'm sorry. Before you record, you have to select the timeline, not the take number window. OK, so now we're on the timeline. Click record. We're recording. Stop recording. Stop recording. And again, you can see we're recording three tracks now. 
and we can bounce again down here. Hit record, take four, take five, take six. It doesn't matter how many tracks we're recording on, all of this functionality is exactly the same. Just make sure if you have the take window selected and active, the, the command R won't work. The record button will still work. In other words, I can click here to record. And that selects the window for you. Space bar to stop, record, stop, etc. Um, where am I here? Record, stop. And there you have it. So literally seconds you can set up a project and start recording. Very trivial in Kohler Classical. Everything is one click away.